Yeah, okay, welcome. So if you're having dysphagia, your doctor, after taking some history from you, asking you some questions, would also like to examine you. The doctor would examine your throat, would examine the oral cavity. Are there any problem within the oral cavity? Is there anything with respect to your palate, the tongue? Is there a proper movement of the tongue, palate, or the hard and soft palate? Your tonsils, then we check it, check your oropharynx, then do a mirror examination or um, fibrotic examination of your nasopharynx and the hypopharynx and laryngeal area. So this will give us an idea, of the, your doctor, an idea of where the problem is from. Why are you having dysphagia? So then check for check your fingernails for colonicia, check for anemia, check for uh, pallor. You do an examination also to check for the chest examination and also abdominal examination is important to check and be sure that okay the chest is free of any problem within the mediastinum or the within the cardiovascular system. Um, patient is also required to have complete head and neck examination because dysphagia may come up even with problems from the neck. The neck may be a problem. Check the lymph nodes, check for the cranial nerves. I also examine cranial nerve from 1 to cranial nerve 12 should be examined. Especially looking out for cranial nerve 9, 10, 11, and 12. 9, 10, 11, and 12. I've seen a patient with lower cranial nerve palsy presenting with dysphagia. The tongue was affected, the soft palate was affected, the larynx, where there was palsy, vocal uh, cord palsy, you know, so all the lower cranial nerves were, were affected. These are neurology causes. That is why all cranial nerves must be examined in persons complaining of difficulty with swallowing. Importantly, you also check for laryngeal crepitus. Don't you can't complete your neck examination even after checking for all the lymph nodes. You must see your laryngeal crepitus to be sure that the larynx are free. Um, do your indirect laryngoscopy, flexible nasal pharyngolaryngoscopy is also very important. Investigations that may be required: full blood count electrolyte, urea, and creatinine. The electrolyte, urea, and creatinine is important here. In addition to LFT and calcium, for patients you are suspecting metastasis, you do liver function tests, electrolyte, urea, and creatinine, and calcium uh, test. Electrolyte segment, ESR, and to protein, for persons you are suspecting that it's likely a malignancy, you need to do that, or a chronic inflammation. You need to have the erythrocyte segmentation and C-reactive protein done for such a patient. Other things you need to do, thyroid function tests, if you're suspecting a thyroid uh, malignancy or a goiter, you do creatinine kinase for the patient when you are suspecting a myopathy. If there is a myopathy that has been suspected, do creatinine kinase for such a patient. Plain radiograph is important do a lateral soft tissue neck, check the, um, the, 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 the bones within the neck. Is there widening of any of that area there? You know, what we describe is as prevertebral widening. Is there prevertebral widening on soft tissue shadow on lateral x-ray? Very important. Or you may be able to, if it's a foreign body, you may be able to identify the metallic foreign body or ostified uh, foreign body on x-ray. Chest x-ray very important if you're suspecting aspiration in the patient or if there's signs of chest infection you need to do chest x-ray. And this will also help to check other things, the cardiovascular system, the pulmonary uh, status of um, the patient. Aside plain radiograph, another radiograph that needs to be done is a contrast radiograph. Here is you consider the barium swallow. Barium swallow is important for persons you're suspecting a space uh, that there's a lesion within the pharynx, within the esophagus. 
on your barium, as long as there's no perforation. If there's perforation, you do not do use barium because it's going to cause, it may cause mediastinitis. So what you use is a non-ionic water-soluble contrast. However, if there's no suspected sufficient perforation, yes, you can go ahead to do your barium swallow. It will help you identify if a shaggy, if you see on the uh, result, shaggy mucosa, you suspect, okay, maybe this is candida. If there, there may be a narrowing or stricture at some point, you suspect, okay, there may be a, uh, a compressive mass somewhere externally or within the lumen. You know, you may be able to identify pouch, pharyngeal pouch or diverticulum on your barium study. Big, big appearance is typical of Achalasia. So you may be able to see that narrowing or tapering end of an, a lower oesophageal sphincter in patients with Achalasia. So that's very, very important. However, the gold standard is barium video fluoroscopy in evaluating swallowing mechanism. The gold standard in evaluating swallowing mechanism is barium video fluoroscopy. So this will help identify or analyze or check the swallowing of food as food passes through the pharynx and esophagus. The video fluoroscopy will help check the integrity of the food that is in swallowed and it will identify the point of where the problem is. So barium video fluoroscopy is key in diagnosing a patient with swallowing uh, problem. Also important is your CT scan, an MRI CT scan for suspecting tumor. CT will help grade, it will help follow up, it will help therapeutically, also it will help in follow up and diagnosis of a patient and also for grade of the condition if it's tumor. However, MRI is good if it's intracranial or for better soft tissue resolution, do an MRI or you're looking at uh, checking the lymph nodes, the lymphadenopathy, do an MRI. For coronary atresia, which is one of the congenital causes which you mentioned, do CT scan to help uh, outline the area where the atresia is. Uh, that is very important. So that's on the CT and also MRI. Endoscopy is very important, both in making diagnosis, we routinely do endoscopy for every patient presenting to us for with uh, complaints of dysphagia. We routinely do endoscopy for them, both um, the, either the flexible or the, the rigid, or as the case may be, the Hopkins rod endoscopy. We do it regularly in the clinic. Laryngoscopy is routine for every patient um, presenting with dysphagia. So you can do the flexible nasal pharyngo laryngoscopy to help uh, locate or help, uh, localize where the problem is. That is um, very important. So by the time you take a patient for rigid endoscopy, you can actually take your biopsy. If it's a laryngeal mass you found there, do uh, a laryngeal biopsy or histology. If it's in the pharynx, do your biopsy. If it's nasopharynx, your scraping biopsy of the nasopharynx, you know. If it's in the hypopharynx, the same, the same thing. Do your biopsy and send specimen for, for histology. That's very important. Flexible upper GI, osophagoscopy with biopsy is also indicated in, in some patients. So that's very important. However, the test done to check the pressure within the esophagus is called manometry. Manometry. This manometry is used to measure the pressure within the esophagus. So special catheters are placed at strategic points in the upper, middle, or the lower esophagus to measure the pressure. Patients with a dysmotility disorder, you know, diffuse esophageal spasm, patient with a calisthenic, patient with scleroderma, if you do a manometry, you'll be able to know where the problem is actually and be able to um, tackle it headlong. Ambulatory 24 hours uh, P osophageal pH monitoring is done to diagnose gastrophageal reflux disease. We know the normal pH 
within the within the um, esophagus is five to seven. If you're getting a pH of four or less than four, you are thinking this is likely gastrophageal reflux disease. And then treatment is commenced. Other investigation, you do your bronchoscopy. If you're suspecting a bronchial cancer, you do your thyroid scan. If you're suspecting a thyroid tumor, you do your, your angiogram. It's very important. If you're suspecting, okay, this may be a vascular, there may be a vascular link. Or you do your cardiac catheterization. For the cardiothoracic, this is their own area. They do cardiac catheterization if they are suspecting a vascular uh, anomaly. Treatment of dysphagia depends on the cause. So once the cause is uh, identified, 